Two, one, two. <laughs> Sounds like a 2203 JCM 800 should. This is a 2004 reissue, right? The 2203X. And it was brought in for me to have a look at, to do a full service, because it was sounding pretty ill, actually. And what I discovered was bias means everything, right? As if we didn't know. So one thing I've learned by servicing a bunch of these older Marshalls, and this one's, you know, 2004, so it's, you know, 17 or so years old, they're never biased correctly, right? So if you own a Marshall like this, or an old, even an older one, and it does not have original power tubes in it, or you didn't replace them yourself and you know that you've got it professionally biased and checked, go and do it, right? Take it to a reputable amp tech who knows what they're doing. I have picked up marshals that have come in here who that have gone into stores, like retail stores, to get biased miles off, right? Mostly cold biased. This one was dead cold, right? And had what we call crossover distortion. So what you heard me playing in the intro of the clip is the amp bias correctly. It sounds like a killer 800 now, right? So in this video, we're going to have a look at the impact of bias. I want to talk about um, what a cold biased amp, you know, kind of sounds like. We'll do, I've got a test of the amp when I first got it, and you'll hear what is called crossover distortion. It's where you're getting cut off in the power tubes, right? So they're not conducting all the way through the cycle and you get this kind of really horrible thin sound. I'm going to take it out to the bench and I'll show you the process that I went through to, to discover the bias problem, which is pretty simple, right? And up on the scope, I'm going to set this up on the oscilloscope and we'll have a look at some waveforms going through the amp where I'll adjust the bias and you'll see the impact visually of what happens when the amp is very, very coldly biased. Stick around, guys. Cheers. Okay, well, we've got this 2203 reissue out of the head cap. This is a July 2004 model, right? So you can tell with these 10-digit uh, serial numbers the year of manufacture and also the week of the year, week 31, which um, 
Well, my calculation means it's late July. It looks pretty clean. These filter caps are all original. Um, transformers are original, as you'd expect. The power tubes. Okay, so these look like they have been replaced. What we've got here. Let me pull one out. I'd expect these to be Marshall branded by this stage. This is uh, an EH EL34. It looks visually okay. You know, it's not brand new, but um, it doesn't look all kind of like it suffered horrendous heat damage. Let's have a look at these preamp tubes. It's a mullard. Okay, and the phase inverter. Again, that's not original. What have we got here? Genelex, Chinese. Okay, that's not original either. And V1, this is a Slepvana. I've spent the last minute looking at this, and I'm pleased to say I think this is 100% untouched, which is unusual, I must say. Every Marshall I've had on this bench has had someone in it. I mean, it would depend, obviously, on the year of manufacturer. The older they are, the higher the chance that it's been touched up. This one, 2004. So, you know, it's, well, on its way to 20 years. Um, look at the uh, the bolts here right on the standoffs and the markers here. Kind of like the nail polish thing, right? So these haven't been unscrewed. This board has never been up and had work underneath it. And I can't see any components that have been clipped off and replaced. Everything on this board looks completely untouched. I'll give this a closer inspection, right? But it does look... 100% stock, which is, as I said, quite amazing. Looking through the pots here, these jacks, totally original. One nanofarad brake cap there. There's our 470 K, 470 picofarad, triple pica. That's all 100% original. All of this wiring here looks completely original. These pots look original. Not one has been replaced. This is the big cement resistor which drops from the screen supply node down to, I think it's 30 volts DC from memory, to power this loop, which is a terribly designed loop. This thing is a tone sucker. Um, th these need to be replaced if you're looking to get um, a proper loop inside one of these reissues. So, you know, that's... That's a problem for another day, but yeah, those loops are shocking. They need to come out and be replaced with an LND 150, um, you know, zero loss, high voltage effects loop, which we do have. Looking through the power section here, this all looks 100% original, untouched, right? Everything's cool. Um, Service-wise, right, I'll, I will go through, check all the resistor values, we don't want to, you know, make sure nothing's uh, drifted. I'll check the pots out too. I noticed the gain pot when I was testing the amp um, is quite scratchy and the taper on it is all over the joint. So kind of nothing happens, nothing happens, or well, very little happens. And then all of a sudden at about six or seven, all of the gain just comes in straight away. So that needs looking at, um, we'll do a bias check and voltages. And then we'll start to see if we can diagnose and find that problem with the the cutting out, you know, what I would call the kind of cold bias style effect. All right, so what I'm hoping is coming out on the video here is the reading on my bias probe. All right, so this is just a good old multimeter. It's the first multimeter I had when I started working on amps. So it's old, it's cheap but it's just got one job in life now. 
which is to measure current and it does that just fine and we'll talk a little bit about how we go about measuring the bias in here because these Marshall amps as many amps do not have one ohm resistors to ground right so you know, there's various methods you can use the shunt method and all these other things measuring current through your output transformer or the primary of your output transformer it's all a bit complicated and, and not the easiest thing to do go and grab one of these bias probes stick it on a meter it's the easiest thing um, you can do right so now let's have a look at the bias current right it's 12.7 milliamps right now let me show you the plate voltage on this guy all right so let's do a quick calculation the plate dissipation it's low right it's just like the last marshal i had on the bench here it's stupidly coldly biased so again someone has thrown new power tubes in here and they either didn't rebias the amp or they did but they had no idea what they were doing now there's a third scenario of course which is someone actually dialed it in like this <laughs> um on purpose well hey it's possible right so let's just while we're in this situation here let's just check a few other voltages right so that's that's the voltage literally on the plate i just want to go to the supply nodes this is our screen supply node right here 460 sorry 457 let's call that this is our phase inverter supply so 10k dropper 10k dropper phase inverter 328 now if you have a look at the, the the last video i did which was a restoration of um a 1983 um 2204 you'll re you might recall or go and have a look right i i uh manipulated or changed the droppers in here on that 2204 to get my phase inverter supply node between 320 and 330. it's the sweet spot for these marshals for the 2203 2204 preamp right so this guy's bang on right in that sweet spot right so right so there's our phase inverter supply here's the supply to v2 here's the supply to preamp v1 i should say no 206 and v1a 248 these are really similar to the restored 2204 in the previous video on my on my channel if you want to check that out right it's pretty much where we ended up i'm going to adjust the bias here and i have a sneaking suspicion if i look at this bias pot here and i can see the way it's set that this thing's been it's hard one way already which makes me suspicious that someone's tried to bias this gone as far as they can Ah, oh, look at that wow we've got plenty of adjustment here plenty <laughs> that's hilarious so not only was it biased incorrectly but all that someone needed to do was dial the pot in so sometimes you see this right that someone puts a new set of tubes in there's not enough adjustment in the bias pot to get it into the right range so they just leave it that was the case with the 2204 that i had on the bench as featured in the previous video now do the bias calculations on this correctly but you know experience tells me that where we actually want this is about mm, 33 milliamps give or take uh bottle current at idle now now that that's settling there let's check our voltages that would have come back a bit all right 449 on the plate now i can actually smell those power tubes <laughs> warming up because they're actually uh running at 70 uh, probably 65 percent 
plate dissipation now. 446 on the screen supply, phase inverter, down to 320 now. Look at that. That's actually exactly the same as the restored 2204, which is a wonderful thing. There's our 320, 281, 4V2, and the V1 supply, 271. Let's have a look at the plate voltages. Bang on 200 and 242. Awesome. So to demonstrate what the effect a cold bias has on an amp, we're going to have a look at the scope here, and we're going to have a look at something which I'm sure everyone's heard of called crossover distortion. So let's have a look at what that is, and I will give a very high-level explanation as to what it is and maybe go into it more detail in the subject of a separate video. So what I've done here, guys, is I've got my scope. I'm running a 150 millivolt peak-to-peak -peak sine wave into the front of the amp. And in this 2203, I've actually got that signal running into the low input because I just want a nice clean. I don't want any gain through the preamp to distort the uh, sine wave. I've got the master volume all the way up, and I'm using the preamp gain effectively as a master volume. So let me bring this thing out of standby and I've got the amp bias completely cold. And let's have a look at the sine wave, right? Look at the kinks in it. So you would expect to see, I'm measuring the uh, the output here on the speaker jack and I'm running into an 8 ohm resistive load, right? So these, this is a sine wave here, obviously, and see these kinks here? This is the crossover distortion, and the amp is biased as I got it, right? Which is as cold as it could possibly be. It was uh, operating at about 12 milliamps at idle. What I'm going to do, I'm going to increase the bias, right? So I've got screwdriver sitting here on the bias pot, and I'm going to bring the bias up. You see how it gets rid of the cross distortion or the kink in the wave. And I'm bringing it back again now, as you can see. There's the kink is back there. Bring the bias back up again. And it nets it out. So in a push-pull amplifier, right, like this, um, each side of the pair it's effectively responsible, the way to think of it, right? It's responsible for kind of one half of the sine wave, right? So one half of your output stage is doing this side and the other half is doing this side. That's the kind of simple view. When it's coldly biased like this, the bias is not running hot enough to allow each stage to properly take care of each side, right? And in class AB, which is how these things are set up when they're biased correctly, it actually allows an amount of interplay between the stages. So one side will amplify the signal and it will continue on to let the other one take over. And there's a, if you like, they, um, uh, you know, they interact together so that you get, and let me increase the bias to show you again, you get a nice clean interchange between the two sides. When it's really coldly biased, we're not actually getting enough interplay between the two stages. So one side of your of your uh, power stage is amplifying the signal and it gets to here and it's in cutoff. And so you've got this kind of point here where uh, there's no interplay between the two stages. It's a gap. And this kink here in your output wave is the gap between the two stages where effectively both stages are in cutoff and not conducting, i.e. not amplifying. Sounds terrible, right? That's that distortion. So correctly bias amplifier um, is critical to get a nice sounding power stage, right? Well, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. Subscribe now, ring the bell, you'll be notified of new content. See you next time.